Hello friends, today we're going to be seeing how we can implement email confirmation inside our .NET Web API identity. We're going to be making the user confirm their email address before they can actually log in and actually utilize our application. We're going to be going through step by step of how we can actually implement this from the controller side as well from any configuration side that it's required. I'm Mohammed, and if you'd like to learn more about .NET, Azure or AWS, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Now let's get started. So what we currently have here is we have a web API which contains two main controllers, the authentication controller as well as the Teams controllers. And basically within the authentication controller, we have the main implementation for logging in, registration, etc. etc. We have worked on this controllers before and basically on this application before. So if you're interested, I'll link the video here somewhere where you can actually watch it. But in today's video, we're going to be taking this a step further. Before we can do that, let's go to our web browser and actually see it in action. So here we can see we have our application running. And if we refresh, we can see it here. If I try to register, I'm just going to register any random user. I'm going to put Muhammad email. I'm going to put Muhammad at test.com. That's one, two, three, for example, dot com. I'm going to put a password, which is going to be pass, for example, one, two, three something around those lines i'm gonna click on execute and now basically we can see we got the token this all we're gonna be changing right now and if i use the same credentials that i have here and, and if, if i go, go down to my logging in click on try it out and actually put it inside my email here and then click on execute we'll be able to see that i got my token available so now we know that my application is working 100 percent so what i want to do right now is first of all i want to introduce the so the first thing that i want to change here is inside my program.cs if i go to my identity configuration what i want to do is i want to add the following inside my configuration i want to go to options to sign in and we're going to see here i have require confirmed email and basically, basically, this will allow my application to always check if my email is confirmed or not. If it's not confirmed, it's not going to allow it to sign in. But if it is confirmed, it will actually allow it to sign in. So now that we have this configuration enabled and this configuration is in place. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back to my authentication controller and I want to change the implementation. So all of the checks I'm going to keep as is. The main thing which I'm going to be changing, which is going to be here. So if the user is created successfully, I don't want to directly generate the token for him so they can actually use my application. What I want to do is I want to update this to actually requiring email confirmation. And the way I need to do that is basically if we go to draw.io. So let's discuss what's going to happen. So once a user register, we're going to be sending them an email address to confirm their email. So here we're going to have an email address. And this email address basically will contain something really important. And this is going to be the code that they're going to be using in order for them to verify their account. So here they're going to have a code which is going to be attached to that email. So the way this works, if the user is not able to receive an email or receive this code, which means that the email that they have entered inside the registration is going to invalid email because they are not able to receive it in case they were able to receive it. So then after the registration, they're going to go to a confirmation section page or so confirm. And then inside this confirmation section, they're going to be requested to enter the code that they have received. So here is going to be a code confirmation page. And then they're going to take that code that they have received inside that email and then basically add it here. Once they have added it here, then we're going to be reaching the end, which basically email is confirmed and basically they are able to log in. This is going to be the flow. So once they register, they're going to be first of all sent an email and inside this email is going to contain the code. Then they're going to be basically redirected to a confirmation page. They're going to be taking the code that has arrived in the email and then basically utilize it to confirm the email address. And this is what we're going to be building. So now what I want to do is I'm not going to be sending emails, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the code directly to the API just so we can save some time. The email is not going to be as complicated to create. So now if I go back to my writer here and here we're going to be seeing how I'm going to be generating this code and we're going to have to rely on the identity in order for us to do so. So to generate the email, I'm just going to put var. Sorry, to generate the code, I'm just going to put var code equal await user manager generate if we go down here we can see email confirmation token 
and basically from this one here what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide the user and this user is going to be the new user that i first declared previously so if we take a look back we can see that the new user is basically an identity user that i have and now usually after this is basically where you have email functionality to send the code to the user but we're not going to be doing that what i'm going to do is simply i'm going to return okay for now and i'm going to return an object and this message is going to be please confirm your email with the code that you have received and just to make uh, to make it simple i'm not going to be sending it through email i'm just going to return the code here for the user so i'm just going to attach it here i'm going to put code and now basically the code that has been generated it will be displayed to the user so that's the first step the second step is I will need to create a new endpoint which is going to be utilized in order for me to confirm that email and this is going to be of type public oops public saying I action result and we're going to call it email verification and we're going to require two things which is going to be the email address and the code so what I also want to do this needs to be a task so let's make it here like this and I'm going to give it a route so we'll be able to address it so I'm going to make these nullable and then I'm going to put if email if code equal equal to null i'm simply gonna return bad request and i'm gonna say invalid payload pretty straightforward so now if everything passed and i have my email and the code then i need to find now the user so i'm gonna put var user equal await user manager to find by email async and i'm gonna pass the email here so if which means the user does not exist we're gonna return a bad request I'm just going to say invalid payload again. I don't want to really give a lot of information on why is it failing, but I just need to make sure that they are actually receiving some kind of an error message. So now that I have checked if the user exists, now it's going to be the next step, which is going to be, I'm going to be verifying the email through the code. And all I'm going to do here is going to put var is verified equal await user manager dot confirm email async. And as we can see, it's going to require the user that I just got, and it's going to also require the code. So it's going to require the user and the code that I have just received. And then once I have done that, I'm going to say if is verified, I'm going to return an object with a message saying email confirmed. I can also send an email for that. It's a welcome email for the email verification. And I'm going to put here dot result. And lastly, if everything is not verified, I'm just going to return bad request, say something went wrong. Perfect. So now that I have this, is basically the full thing that I need to do in order for me to validate my email. So first of all, I generate the code and then I utilize an endpoint for me to valid validate it. Now let's run my application and I'm going to go back to my web browser. And what I'm going to do here and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the email just here. I'm going to make it four and I'm going to click on execute. So now if we take a look here, we basically have a message rather than the token please confirm your email with the code and this is the code but as you can see this code is quite long but let's try it at first so i'm just going to copy this code and now if we refresh actually because we need a new endpoint we can see i have a new endpoint which is called email verification so let's just re-input this again i'm going to put again name muhammad email muhammad at test 12121234 for example dot com and then i'm going to specify a random password i'm just going to put password 123 something around those lines execute i receive the code here i'm just going to copy this code and now i'm going to go to email verification click on try it out i'm going to put my code that i have just received and i'm just going to copy the same email that i have used before which is going to be this one and i'm going to put it here and now click on execute so now that i have clicked on execute now we can see i got my email confirmed so now we know that the full process is working but before we do any of this we need to do additional testing so i'm just going to create a new email i'm going to change this to 22 and now we have received this code now i'm going to try logging in without actually confirming the code now we're going to see that this is working because we did not add that logic there so we're going to be adding this logic here so now if we click on this we can see that I got the token which should not be the case so now if I go back to Rider, what I need to do is I need to stop my application and I need to update my login in order for me to verify that the user is logged in so I'm just going to add here if await user manager email is not confirmed so now let's run my application again and if I go back to my web browser so now if I try to log in we can see there's still an error here so let's check the database so what I'm going to do I'm just going to open this I'm going to click test connection and now if we go to the search to the database and we can see my email here is not confirmed so that means that something is not right so let's go back to my login action and check it there so let's put a 
put this inside a boolean and test it out so i'm gonna put here var check confirmed equal this and then i'm just gonna put this here so now let's try to log in again i'm gonna restart my application and if we go to my web browser and let's click on execute again and we can see here that we got a false which means the email oh it's my fault we need to make sure this is not valid so that was the problem so now let us just click again execute and now we put that's run we'll be able to see here that email not confirmed and basically the user is not able to log in so basically i forgot to add the check here so this is basically how we can force it now the last item that we want to cover is basically if we take a look at the token that's being returned it's actually very quite long so if it's already embedded inside a url that should be fine but if we're creating a web api and we want to make sure it is nice and concise we don't really want it to be this long how can we make sure that it's a shorter code and it's still valid we can configure our identity provider to do that so i'm just going to go back to my application stop it and then i'm going to go to my program.cs i'm going to add the following so we have to go here to the add identity and i'm going to add here an option for the email providers email confirmation actually and i'm going to add the following options tokens email confirmation token provider i'm going to say equal to token options and here we can see we have the default one and i'm going to use a default email provider and now i'm gonna run my application again and i'm gonna go to my web browser try to register for a new user i'm gonna change this here i'm gonna change this i click on execute and now we can see we have a much more simpler code that we can actually utilize and now for i'm gonna instead of this long code i'm just gonna confirm the new one and i'm just gonna take this here and add it here and now if i execute we should be able to get that email has been confirmed and if i try to log in with this user so i may i can just copy paste it from here and I can directly add it here. And once that is done, click on execute. We'll be able to see that this user is able to log in because the email is confirmed and we can get the token. Perfect. So this has been a very quick video in order for us to cover how we can actually add email confirmation to our identity application within our .NET Web API. If you have any questions or any clarifications, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions also please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon and buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day